Video number 97 from Mytho-Religious Series Book 4 Ancient Sky Gazers or Travelers or Aliens Part 6 UFO Depictions in Medieval Europe Dear fellow truth seekers, In my past few videos I have been sharing information about various artifacts from around the world that seem to prove that our ancestors might have the ability to navigate the skies using flying machines and or aliens had visited our planet in the distant past. And in the last video I have shared several depictions of flying machines and UFOs in ancient Indian epics called the Vimana. They even still have ancient books that have instructions of how to build aircrafts. In this video, I will share more pictures of UFO depictions in Europe. It seems that the topic of flying machines and unidentified flying objects, i.e. UFOs, have always been present in humans' minds throughout the ages. This is definitely not a new thing. Here are some very strange depictions of UFOs during the Middle Ages in Europe. The Baptism of Christ A disc-shaped object is shining beams of light down on John the Baptist and Jesus. Fitzwilliam Museum, Cambridge, England, painted in 1710 by artist Eric de Gelder. It depicts a classic hoovering silvery saucer-shaped UFO shining beams of light down on John and Jesus. What could have inspired the artist to combine these two subjects? Madonna and Child this fresco of Madonna and Child depicts on the top right side of the image of a UFO hoovering in the distance. A blow up of this fresco reveals tremendous details about this UFO, including portholes. It seems to indicate a religious involvement between UFOs and the appearance of the Christ Child. This painting is called the Madonna with San Giovannino. It was painted in the 15th century by Domenico Ghirlandaio, 1449-1494, and hangs as a part of the Loser collection in the Palazzo Vecchio. Above Mary's right shoulder is a disc-shaped object. When a section of this picture is blown up, you can see a man and his dog clearly be seen looking up at the object. What object is that? French coin. In France, there was a coin minted in 1680 that shows a hoovering disc-shaped UFO with what appears to be portholes or lights around the outer rim. What object is that? Prodigiorum Liber, the Book of Prodigies. This is a Renaissance illustration of a UFO sighting in Rome, detailed by a book by Roman historian Giulio of Sequence called The Book of Prodigies. Moses and the Tablets In this painting found on a wood drawer from furniture kept at the Earl's Doltremont in Belgium, Moses is depicted receiving the Tablets of the Ten Commandments with flaming horns. Several equally flaming objects are in the sky before him. The date and artist are unknown. Jesus' Crucifixion Paintings this is a 17th century fresco of the Crucifixion, Sveti Hosveli Cathedral in Mitzketa, Georgia. Look at the two saucer shaped craft on either side of Christ. Frescoes throughout Europe reveal the appearance of spaceships. This 1350 painting seems to depict a small looking man looking over his shoulder at another flying vehicle. His vehicle is decorated with two twinkling stars, one reminiscent of national insignia on modern aircraft. This painting hangs above the altar at Visoki Dekani Monastery in Kosovo, Yugoslavia. What are the artists trying to depict here? There are many more depictions of disc-shaped unidentified flying objects in Middle Age paintings in Europe. So far, there is no satisfying explanation to what these objects are. It has been argued by many skeptics that these disc-shaped objects are actually a certain artistic style of depicting heavenly beings, 
such as angels in their chariots? Well, it might be so. But there is one more artifact that is the most convincing evidence that these ancient people are definitely not trying to describe angels, but rather they have witnessed unidentified flying objects, i.e. UFOs, occupying the sky. Nuremberg UFO Battle At sunrise on 14th April 1561, the citizens of Nuremberg beheld a very frightful spectacle. It appeared to be filled with cylindrical objects from which red, black, orange, and blue-white discs and globes emerged. Crosses and tubes resembling cannon barrels also appeared whereupon the objects promptly began to fight one another. This event is depicted in the famous 16th century woodcut by Hans Glaser. Hans Glaser was a journalist of sort in 16th century Germany. He depicted a wondrous and perplexing event that occurred in the early morning hours of April 14, 1561, in the city of Nuremberg. His woodcut shows a sky full of strange objects, smoke arising from the ground where some objects seem to have crashed. It was accompanied by the following description. In the morning of April 14, 1561, at daybreak between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun, and then this was seen in Nuremberg, in the city, before the gates and in the country, by many men and women. At first, there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircular arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter. And in the sun, above and below, and on both sides, the color was blood. There stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous color. Likewise, there stood on both sides, and as a torus above the sun, such blood red ones and the other balls in large number, about three in a line and four in a square, also some alone. In between these globes, there were visible a few blood red crosses, between which there were blood red strips becoming thicker to the rear and in front malleable like the rods of reed grass, which were intermingled among them two big rods, one on the right, the other to the left. And within the small and big rods, there were three, also four and more globes. This all started to fight among themselves so that the globes, which were first in the sun, flew out to the ones standing on both sides. Thereafter, the globes standing outside the sun in the small and large rods flew into the sun. Besides, the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought vehemently with each other for over an hour. And when the conflict in and again out of the sun was most intense, they became fatigued to such an extent that they all, as said above, fell from the sun upon the earth as if they all burned, and then they wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black spear, very long and thick sighted, the shaft pointed to the east, the point pointed west. Whatever such signs mean, God alone knows, although we have seen shortly one after another many kinds of signs under heaven which are sent to us by the Almighty God to bring us to repentance, we still are unfortunately so ungrateful that we despise such high signs and miracles of God. Or we speak of them with ridicule and discard them to the wind in order that God may send us a frightening punishment on account of our ungratefulness. After all, the God-fearing will by no means discard these signs but will take it to heart as a warning of their merciful Father in heaven, will mend their lives and faithfully beg God that he may avert his wrath, including the well-deserved punishment on us, so that we may temporarily hear and perpetually there live as his children. For it may God grant us his help. Amen. By Hans Glaser, Latter Painter of Nuremberg. Now, Modern skeptics have explained the account as figurative instead of literal, or as describing a solar phenomenon, perhaps a sun dog. A sun dog is a phenomenon by which the sun's light appears as a halo around the sun, even creating spots of brightly shining light around the sun. 
I think this description hardly corresponds to the description of what Hans Glazer tried to describe. To me, the description of Hans Glazer is closer to the description of ancient Mahabharata's wars that I have shared in my previous video. But what do you think? Dear fellow truth seekers, isn't it puzzling how many ancient civilizations seem to be so advanced in their knowledge concerning the universe and the solar system? Many of them know that the heavenly bodies are spherical, including the Earth, and that they all orbit around the Sun. And yet, Western academic world only acknowledged this circa 1500 CE after Copernicus made that public. What happened in between? Many of the ancient civilizations were so advanced it seems like they were not the same people as the present-day dwellers of the same spot. And it seems as if we, modern-day humans, are not even their direct descendants. Much knowledge seems to be lost in between. There are so many advanced excavations that we have found today which are unexplainable. Yes, there are some hoaxes. There are some evidence that have been debunked but there are also enough real ones that we should not ignore if we really want to know the truth. We should not brush aside any evidence just because they do not fit in our conventional historical timeline and assumptions, don't you think? I have my own theory that I think might explain all this, but I cannot share it yet. I will do it when it is time to do so, after sharing all the information needed to draw a conclusion. Right now, I'm just sharing all the information that I can gather on this topic. Up from next week, I will be sharing information concerning another topic in connection with our mysterious past that has been puzzling us for millennia. That is about the sunken paradise of Atlantis, Lemuria, and or Mu. At the meantime, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you in my next video.